Shim Chong, the good daughter. This tale takes place a long time ago in a beautiful village. Father, be careful, there's a brook up ahead. Okay, you got the end of my walking stick? Seven-year-old Shim Chong is leading her blind father by the end of his walking stick. The little girl was quite adept at safely steering her father about. Fate was hard for the kind-hearted girl up to that point. Her mother passed away not long after giving birth to the baby girl. So her father had to beg other women in the village for breast milk in order to raise her all by himself. Thanks to his devoted care, the girl grew up to be kind and healthy. Shim Chong made a living by sewing clothes and doing chores for other villagers. Her devotion to her father was known far and wide. One day, Lady Chang from the lower village sent a servant and asked if Shim Chang could come visit. So Shim Chang followed the servant to Lady Chang's house. I heard so much about your good deeds. If only you could be my own daughter. Well, you wouldn't have to work so hard if I adopted you as my own. What do you think, my dear girl? Thank you for being so kind to me, but I have to take care of my father myself. I will instead come and visit you often. I have to go home now. My father must be worried. And she was correct. In fact, Chong's father was waiting anxiously for his daughter outside his house. Why hasn't she come home already? Well, maybe I should go and look for her. He went and got his walking stick and ventured back outside. Right, this is where the brook is. I should be careful. He tapped his stick to carefully maneuver his way across the stone bridge. Alas, he slipped and fell into the water. Help! Somebody help me! Here, grab my hand. Thank you for your help. I am the head monk of the temple on the other side of the mountain. How about praying to Buddha? You may be able to regain your sight if you offer 300 bushels of rice and pray fervently. Is that really possible? Tempted by the possibility of regaining his sight, Mr. Shim impulsively promised to donate 300 bushels of rice. I must have been out of my mind. Why did I promise 300 bushels of rice when we don't even have enough rice for tomorrow? That was when Shim Chong returned home. Father, why are your clothes drenched? He explained to his daughter what had happened and what the monk had told him. Really? Well, then don't worry, Father. I will find a way to come up with the rice. Despite her confident promise, the girl couldn't think of a way to get that massive amount of rice either. Shim Chong was so worried that she couldn't eat or sleep. Just then, a passing villager noticed her staring off into the distance. Shim Chong, I was at the market where I heard something bizarre. Some traders were looking for a human sacrifice. They put up a lot of money, but who would volunteer to throw away one's life like that? Shim Chong was immediately tempted by the amount of money offered. The next day, she went to see the traders. When they heard her story, they offered to give her 300 bushels of rice, plus some extra rice and money for her father who would be left alone. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. She returned home to make several outfits for her father and to cook food to last a few days. She sat down with her father on the eve of the day she was to offer herself as human sacrifice. Father, Lady Chang wants to adopt me as her daughter, and she offered me three hundred bushels of rice in return. Don't worry about me. Even if you don't hear from me, I'll be living a happy life there. Shim Chong, do you have to go? Oh, my daughter. Leaving her crying father behind, she boarded the trader's ship. Heartbroken to see the old blind man crying, the villagers told him that his daughter volunteered to become a human sacrifice in return for 300 bushels of rice. What? No! Oh, Shim Chong, come back! I don't want the rice! I, I don't want my sight! Come back to me! But the ship carrying Shim Chong already left the port. The ship stopped in the middle of the sea. The traders held a simple ceremony before telling Shim Chong to stand on the side of the ship. She covered her face with her skirt and jumped into the roaring ocean. When Shin Chong regained consciousness, she found herself surrounded by an incredible sight. Apparently moved by her love for her father, the god of the sea brought the girl to his underwater palace. What about Shim Chong's father? Did he regain sight after her sacrifice? Sadly, no. Nothing had changed for him, but he did have the money and food provided by the traders, so he became more financially stable than before. But the news of newly found wealth attracted some unwanted attention. A woman, simply known as Beng Dok's mom, took notice of this situation and swooped in to take advantage. She stole his money little by little until she fled with the entire stash one day. The father was left penniless and was forced to beg for food from villagers. Meanwhile... I wonder how my father's doing. Oh, I hope he's eating well. Shim Chong's days at the Sea Palace were peaceful, but she couldn't stop worrying about her father. Shim Chong, would you like to go back up on land? Oh, may I? The sea god sent her up to the surface in a large lotus flower, which floated at the exact spot where Shim Chong had jumped. It was discovered by the traders who were passing by. The traders offered it to their young king. The king, amazed by the flower's size and beauty, was studying it closely when the petals opened up to reveal Shim Chong. Moved by her beauty, the king married Shim Chong and made her queen. Shim Chong was still worried about her father. She asked her husband, the king, for a favor. May I host a big party for every blind person in the kingdom? Maybe I can find my father that way. People came from all over the country to enjoy the party. The queen was looking for her father among the crowd when she spotted a familiar face, a man wearing shabby clothes. Father? Father, it's me! Is it really you? This is really my daughter? Yes, Father, it's, it's me! Oh, thank God you've come back to me. The father and daughter were finally reunited. They lived happily together at the royal palace, and Queen Shim Chong generously shared her wealth with the poor so that everyone could live in comfort. <laughs> <laughs>